I want to tag this test. God help me. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God help me. Uh, I like this quote from Thomas Fuller. You'll see it on the screen. If your desires be endless, your cares will be too. If your desires be endless, your cares will be too. Listen, we're in a world that encourages fulfilling urges and obsessions, self-indulgence. Come on, say yes. I need y'all to wake up with me. Don't worry about instruction. Don't worry about nothing else. Stay with me. All right. We're in a world that encourages excess. More, more of this and more of that. More, more, more. We're living in a world that encourages that. If you know what I mean, come on, say yes. But it is possible to lose self-control over urges and instincts always involved in heated arguments. How many of y'all know people that's always involved in some heated, heated desires be endless? Plus, you lose, the worst thing of all is you lose concern for others. Uh huh. That is when you encourage or you follow after the encouragement of this world. So when it comes to making weighty decisions, just wave at me if you got a you got a weighty decision, an important decision. Wave at me if you got an important. I'm trying to wake y'all up. It's all right. Turn that heat down. That's probably the problem. Turn the heat down. Y'all done got sluggish. Turn it down. Put it on 63. Amen. How many of y'all got some important decisions you got to make? In your life. All right, wave at me. I'm taking a census. Anybody got anything important you got? I want to make sure this is the right word for those that I'm talking to. It's possible that your urges are harmful to your decision-making process. It's possible, I'm going to say it again, that the urges, your desires, your harmful desire will drown out God's voice so that you can make those weighty or tough decisions. Come on, say yes. Listen, when God's voice is drowned out, listen, it delays, it stops you connecting with God. When God's voice is, con is drowned out, it delays connecting with God. But I got some good news. I got some good news. I got some good news. God is here. Uh -huh. Put the screen back up. God is here to help us get to him. God is throwing out the lifeline. He said, I know you're drowning in urges. I know you're drowning in des decisions. I know you're drowning in certain mindsets. I know that the world is encouraging you. They're encouraging you. Don't, don't be a, a, a person that's reliable, dependable. Don't be a person that we can rely on. But I want to drop some good news. God is here to help us in our time of need. I love what Isaiah 40 and 31 said. It says, God want to remove the hindrance, but they that what? Wait upon the Lord. This requires preaching with me. They that what? Upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings. Come on, read as what? And they shall what? And not be weary and they shall what? Walk and not faint. Listen, some of the, the hindrance that we go through in life is that we're getting ahead of God. But if you wait on God, I promise you, he'll throw out the lifeline. He knows you're drowning. He knows you're going through. He know that, listen, some ideals and some, some things you're going through is drowning you. But he says, listen, if you wait on me, and don't think I'll come and get you. If you wait on me, I'll come and see about you. Come on, say yes. So walk with me around this text. Walk with me around this text. So Paul writes to the church in Rome to deal with this important issue of the mind. Come on, put up Romans 12 and 1 one more time. It says, listen, it says it right more. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your, come on, say what? Body. So verse one is about your what? Body. Verse one is about your what? Body. Go to verse two. And ye be not what conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your what? Body. So verse one is about your body. Verse two is about your mind. So Paul writes to the church in Rome to deal with the important issue of our mind. 
The mind is where the greatest spiritual battle takes place. The mind is where we live every day. The mind, listen, is where the spiritual battle of our lives takes place, which leads us to overcoming or surrendering urges. If you want to overcome certain mindset, if you want to get out of stinking thinking, if you want to get out of that place, listen, it's only going to happen in your mind. Want to get over urges and desires and obsession and things that you want to get out of is only going to happen when you surrender that to God and he says, I'll come and see about you. I want to say this life takes place in your mind. I'm going to say that again. Life takes place in your what? It reminds me of a picture. If you had the sermon up, you'll see it. it listen, it, listen, it, it, life play, takes place in your mind. Listen, it's almost like all day long, all day long, listen, certain ideals are going through our mind. You ever notice when you want to lock in on something, you get ideals at the wrong time. You get suggestions at the wrong time. Listen, your mind is somewhere else. I don't know if I'm preaching to anybody in here, but it seems like when you want to stop doing something, you want to stop thinking about something, you want to stop obsessing about something, it seems like it's always something in your mind that want to drop an ideal that interrupts when you're trying to stop it. And so what he's trying to say to them in this text is that the battlefield, the spiritual battle that you're going through is in your mind. Come on. And so, for example, I love this in Job 2 and 1. I didn't give it to you. But Job is attacked physically and afflicted with every matter of sores on his body and feet. Why is he attacked with his body and his feet with sores? Job is attacked with his body, all over his body was sores, all over his feet was sore. Listen, because the devil knew if I can attack your body, I got your mind. He knew if I can attack you physically, I can attack you mentally. And if I can attack you mentally, I got you. I got you. I got you. That's why Romans 12 and 1 is about the body. Because if I can attack your body, then verse 2, verse 12 and 2, I can attack your mind. So outside stresses, which causes us to entertain urges or harmful desires, affect us mentally. Listen, most of the time, the things for which we deal with on the outside is going to affect us mentally. When you don't have good fellowship with your parents, it affects you mentally. When you have good fellowship with your boss at work, it affects you mentally. What they going to do? Are they going to fire me? What's going to happen? If you don't got a good relationship with your boo, your bae, your booger bear, listen, it affects you what? Happy Valentine's Day. It affects you mentally. Come on, Paul. Come on, because we're almost done now. How does God get glory out of my life if I'm constantly battling with deserved urges and obsessions and things I can't stop? How does God get glory out of my life? Because, he, listen, if I'm attacked by my body, then it affects my mind. But how does God get glory? Oh, I just want to drop a pause and, and let you know right here. God really is truly only trying to get some glory out of your life. That's all he's trying to do. That's all he's trying to do. So this text today, this text today is not the ideal of focusing on me for me. That's not what this text is about today. Because a lot of times what we think is that if I can just get my mind right and focus on me, then if I focus on me, listen, it's going to be better for me. But I just want to drop by to let you know, Paul in this text is really not saying what we do, what we hear when we go to some therapist. Most of our modern day therapists is all about concerning about you, making sure you good and making sure you well. But Paul is starting in a different place in this text. Paul is saying, actually, make sure your relationship with God is right. Make sure you got your relationship with God is right. Come on, say worship. Make sure your worship with God is right. Then if your worship with God is right, then everything with your family is right. Your job is right. Listen, your children is right. And then when that is right, then you focus on you. 
And so Paul is saying, don't use me today in this text as a modern day therapist. That is not why I'm here. My, I'm saying God is going to send the lifeline for you because I need you to be in right relationship with God. If you're in right relationship with God, your children are going to feel it. Your boss is going to feel it. They're going to say, "Woo, you doing your job right. Your wife is going to say, "Woo, you a good man. Your children are going to say, "Woo, daddy is hanging out and doing things right. Because if you get that right, then you can worry about you. Uh, I'm just going to throw this in right here and then I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. But for the last 99 weeks in this pandemic, we've been focusing on me. We've been focusing on me. I'm going to say it again. Y'all been involved in self-help books. Y'all done been on podcasts on me. A better version of me. I'm going to be a better version of me. For 99 weeks, you ain't got it right yet. Paul said you don't have it right yet because you got to start with God. Your relationship with God. I need y'all repeat it with me. My relationship with my relationship with is more important than me. It's more important than me. You had 99 weeks to get that right. How many more self-help books do you need? How many more therapy sessions are you going to go through? How many more podcasts are you going to listen to? A better version of me. It's going to be for me. And the truth is we're creating narcissism. We're creating narcissists. There's only concern about you. But the truth is, I'm not here for me. I am here to worship. I am here to worship. And if my worship is right, everybody going to feel it. Everybody going to know. They're going to look at you like, yeah, he spent some time with God this morning. Then when that's right, then my life will be better. My life is in whose? Not my hand. Don't keep buying your little self-help books and signing up for all the therapy you can. I don't have no problem with therapy. I've been through therapy. But listen, for 99 weeks, y'all didn't done all of that. And your life is still jacked up because my life is in his hand. So if my life is in his hand, I got to make sure me and God tight. We, I got to make sure me and God on the same page. Can I keep going? So this text is not encouraging, focusing on me for me. Instead, Paul is encouraging us to look inside of ourselves for the glory of God. Come on, lift your hand and say, for your glory, I'll do anything just to see you. Come on, say, just to see you and behold you. How many of y'all want to be where he is? I want to be where he is. I want to be where he is. Listen, my family is dependent on it. My employer is dependent on it. My mama is dependent on it. My daddy is dependent on it. I want to be where God is. Want to be where he is. And so listen, so Paul says, come on, Paul, help us out. We got 17 more minutes. Paul says, God gets glory out of my life when we respond with number one, separation. Come on, say separation. God gets glory when he sees that I am a person that has what it takes to avoid worldly pitfalls. God gets glory out of my life when he sees and he recognizes, oh, Adrian knows how to see the worldly pitfall. He sees them coming. I see you, devil. I see you coming. I see you. Look at Romans 12 and 2. You think I'm kidding. It's in the text. And be not what? Conform to what? This world. This is actually a warning. Come on, say warning. Paul wants the church to avoid conforming to this world system. Come on, say why. Come on, say why? Why? Romans, uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 says that this world, that this world actually has a ruler. This world we live in, that God dropped us here. We here now. We here now. Uh, look at somebody say, but I am supposed to be the salt of the earth. I am supposed to be the salt of the earth. I am. I am here to make a difference. I really am. I really am. But listen, he's, look at 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. Because this world has a ruler. Come on, for it says, in whom the God of what? This world had blinded the minds of them which believe not least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on 
them. The God of this world blinds you to the gospel. I'm going to say it again. The world, I just realized, Brother Kawan, I don't have to repeat myself. We're on video, but I'm going to do it one more time. The God of this world blinds us to the gospel. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. The God of what? This world does what? Blinds us to the gospel. That simply means this. That can't be the God I'm talking about right here. That I'm supposed to have fellowship with. That I'm supposed to be in partnership with. That can't be the God that this text is talking about. It says the God of what? This world blinds us to the gospel. That ain't the loving God I'm talking about. So the God of this world has a goal. The God of this world has a goal. It is to do what? Blind me. Little G. So I'll never see the gospel. I'll never see the gospel. The God of this, I'm going to repeat myself because I can. The God of this world has a goal, which is to blind me to the gospel. Uh Uh-huh. So Paul is referring to the God of this world as Satan. The God of this world is who? Little G. The God of this world is who? And so we should not conform to this world, number one, because this world has a ruler. Number two reason why we should not conform is because the God of this world is not everlasting. First Corinthians 7 and 31. He that has an ear, hear me in the spirit. I, this, what's going on now is God, God is trying to distort this gospel. That's why we had internet problems on this morning. Because this is what, God, this is what Satan does not want us to hear. Is that he is the ruler of this world and his goal is to blind me. That's the first reason why I shouldn't conform. Number two reason is in 1 Corinthians 7 and 31, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it for the present form, come on, of this world is Listen, I need to be attached to something that's everlasting. I don't like when people say, and I hear them say it all the time, you, you, you live once. I said, the devil is a lie. I live forever. You live once. But I want you to know I serve a God that says that I'm going to live forever. Look at somebody and say, go live, 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 live. Look at somebody and say, live. No matter what you're going through, live. Come on, hit, hit, hit me. To he live. Don't make me wait. That's the last time. Mercy. Y'all sit down. Don't make me wait. Don't make me wait. Don't make me wait. But look at somebody and say, I'm going to live. I'm gonna live. You going to die. No, no. Put me where I was. I'm going to live. Thank you so much. So you can walk around talking about you live. You only live once. In the God of your world, you live once. But look at somebody and say, I'm going to live. Hallelujah. So number one, number one, number one, I should not conform to this world because number one, listen, there is actually a God of this world who has a mission, which is to blind me. Number two, the, this world is passing away. Can I give you the third reason? In 1 John 2 and 15, I just love how he said this word. John, John it warns believers not to love this world. He says, do not, come on, read it with me. Do not what? Love the world or the what? In the world. If anyone loves the world, this is strong, this is strong, this is strong right here. If anybody loves the world and the ruler of this world, the love of the Father is not in him. Look at 16. It says, 1 John 16, for all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh. You want to know why you're dealing with urges and obsessions and mindsets? Because it says, for all that is in the world, that comes from the world. Desires, obsession, urges, you can't stop it. Wife go to bed, you downstairs on the computer. You got stuff you're dealing with all the time. Talking about you, uh, yeah, anyway, let me get For the God of this world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the what? And the pride of life. Always talking about you. Always me. I'm always involved with me. And everybody that deals with you got to deal with trying to satisfy you. 
Can I go back and read 16 one more time? For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life is not. Come on, y'all read it with me. It's not from the Father, but it's from the what? The world. Gave you three reasons why you should never conform to this world. Can I do it real quick? You shouldn't conform because it's got a God here. It's passing away. And if you love this world, it warns you that you will always deal with urges, harmful desires. Listen, ain't nobody safe with you. Employer can't trust you. Nobody can trust you. You're always never in a place of stability because you are conformed to this world. Listen, let me say it like this. An attachment to the God of this world means that you lose the strength. That you need to fight off these things. I need some strength. How many of y'all need strength? I need some strength to deal with some stuff. I need some strength to say no to some stuff. But listen, until I have some strength, and listen, until I have some strength, I got to examine myself. Look at somebody say, examine yourself. That's why we say that during communion. Examine yourself. Because Paul is saying an attachment to the God of this world means that you lose your strength. And when you lose your strength, can I say it like this? When you lose your strength, it is possible. It is very much possible to desert the Lord and people who are believers. I'm going to say that one more time. When you love the God of this world and when you conform to this world, it's very well possible to desert the Lord. Look at 2 Timothy 4 and 10. Because this hurt, this hurt in this text. For Demas... Who once loved the Lord uh in love with this what present world has deserted me. And I'm trying to tell you right now, if you're a believer, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, your blood wash, you're, you're on your way to heaven. I want you to know that when you change and become a unbeliever and you start conforming to this world, those of us that are believers, we feel abandoned. We feel, we were like, come on, come on, come on. We need you. We need you. Listen, uh, listen, I need you to survive. Number two, can I go on? Paul says, God gets glory out of my life. When we respond with, come on, say separation. separation. Number two, transformation. Uh, any person who wants can know the truth of God's world beside or instead of your feelings. Anybody. If you really want to know the truth of God's word, listen, you can know it beyond. I mean, I just feel like it should go like this. I mean, I just, you know, I don't want to hurt nobody. Feel I just feel like it should go by. But look at somebody and say, anybody who wants to know about the truth of God's word can. All you got to do is open up your Bible. Come on, say Transformation. Romans 12 and 2, it says in the B part, but be ye what? Transform. I see you, Brother Powell. Good to see you. I see you, Brother Livingston. Thank you so much. I see my cousin Tiffany. Come on, let's celebrate those that are live streaming with us. Amen. Romans 2, uh, the B part, the B part, but be ye what? Transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. And so what this means, what this means for my, my smart people in here, there's a negative and there's a positive. And so the, the first thing, separation, come on, say that's negative. That's a negative thing. That's a negative thing. Listen, but the positive is be ye what? Transform. That is to do something. Uh-huh. That is to do something. But the problem is in this text, and Paul is trying to tell the church at Corinth, is some people think they can do both. They really, really think that they can, listen, operate in a place of I can be like the world and I can be transformed. They really think I can have everything that the world has and be in the place of I am transformed. But Galatians 6 and 7 says it this way, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man what sower, that shall he also. In other words, um, I'm going to say it like this because I got a fellow keyboard player. I really thought I can walk into God's house 
and play Anita Baker on the keys and it wasn't going to affect my life. I really thought that. I thought I can listen to that, let it manifest through my music, and it wasn't going to affect me at all. Uh, uh, if you, it, it, can you agree with me? Say yes. I thought I can listen to whatever was on the radio and play it in the worship setting, and they wouldn't know it. They wouldn't even know it. They, they, they just keep on shouting. I really thought that, that. But look at somebody say, you can't be both. You can't be both. You can't do both. Uh, and so, listen, so I, I, I knew, Brother Joe, they weren't going to get that. So let me get, let me borrow my medical people on here on this morning. But sometimes, sometimes it's, 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 it's like, it's like not catching a serious illness in the body earlier because of the symptoms were not noticeable. It was not noticeable. And so you go to your doctor for your regular checkup and you think all this well. They do blood work and they do everything. Then the doctor calls you back and says, listen, you're dealing with a diagnosis. You're dealing with a medical complication. And they ask you, did you notice certain symptoms? You say, mm-mm. Did you notice this in your body? Mm, yeah, not really. What was your pain level? I mean, you know, I deal with pain all the time, out of three, four. Well, no big deal. But it's just like when you are part of the world conforming to the world you won't even know what you're doing to yourself spiritually you have no idea what you do because the symptoms are not noticeable the symptoms brother Brady are not readily noticeable it will not pop up until you can't got you don't got enough strength to fight off an urge that's when you find out that you were trying to do both. Look at somebody and say, I can't do both. I cannot do both. Even though the symptoms are maybe not apparent, even though the symptoms are may not been jumped out yet. But listen, one day I got to deal with Dr. Jesus. <laughs> And Dr. Jesus said, I told you, Pastor Cranford told you on February 13th at the 9 a.m. service, you can't do both. Look at somebody say, I can't do both. It don't matter if you don't recognize the symptoms. But you got to understand, I can't do both. And so Paul told the church at Rome, for as much as I am transformed to this world, I will not be transformed in my mind. As much as I am not transforming, as much as I transform to this world, as much as I take on this world's way of thinking, as much as I take on this way, this world's way of doing things, I will never be transformed in my mind. And you wondering why you dealing with stuff? You wondering why your mama and your mama and your daddy and everybody, your employer, your boo and everybody, they cannot deal with you. It's because you are transformed to this world. This world has a ruler. And this job of the ruler is to do what? Blind me. So I'll never see the truth. I'll never see the truth of God's work. I'm, I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. I know y'all done with me now. I know y'all done with me because for, for 99 weeks, you know, I just been working on me and I'm going to just keep on working on me. Baby, it ain't work yet. All I'm trying to say, you may as well try. Look at somebody say, you may as well try Jesus. Because I wasn't really, I, I really wasn't going to do F sharp, but I feel it. I feel the F sharp creeping up my backside. James 4 and 4. Don't worry about the first part. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Uh -huh. Here's the main part I want to look like. No, come on, read it loud. Read it loud. No, ye not. That the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy. You're an enemy of God. You're an enemy of God. You can't do both. You can't. Hey, let me say it like this. If your friends don't know you saved, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> if your friends don't know that you're walk, whose side are you leaning on? I'm leaning on the Lord. Let me hear that answer. Yeah, come on. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. My friends should know that I'm walking on the Lord's side. Look at somebody say, whose side are you leaning on? Whose side 
are you standing on? Look at somebody say the Lord's side. Say yeah. Listen, this is a teaching message, but I feel something. The believer that changes their lifestyle. Here it is. Here it is. I need y'all to write this down. I need y'all to write this down. The believer that changes their lifestyle will soon be disinterested and turned off with certain urges. It's on you. It really is on you. Listen, as soon as you change your lifestyle. You will soon be disinterested in porn. I said it didn't. I'm out here now. You will soon be disinterested in atheism. I wasn't going to call nothing else out, but you will soon be disinterested in stepping out. Uh-huh. You will soon be done with trying to do things the world trying to do. But it is on you. It is. Look at somebody say, it's on you. It's on you. And the truth of the matter is... The, the reason why we don't want to change because it don't hurt me. It ain't bothering me. I'm cool. But the truth is, does God get any glory out of that? That's the truth. That's the question. Does God get any glory out of me late night get, uh, scrolling on the computer? Does God get any glory out of that when I'm not in his presence? Does God get any glory when I'm all up and down and Listen, I'm talking atheist language. Does God get any glory out of that? And here, so when you answer no, then you got to go to the next thing. Does my family benefit by me all over the place? Because a double-minded man is unstable. A double-minded woman is unstable in all, in all your ways. But in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall, he shall, yes, he look at somebody say, he shall, he shall. direct yes, your path. Yes, he will. So you got to stop thinking, it don't bother me. It don't bother me. Uh, I almost used the word A-T-L-L. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are that you live in a world that you don't have to say yes to God? He blew the breath of life into you. He caused, he caused cars to slow down so they didn't hit you. Listen, listen, I, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. But listen, you got to understand the process. Y'all sit down, y'all sit down. The process of transformation is on you. It's on you. It really is on you when you're ready. Uh-huh. Because God is saying, I'm throwing out the lifeline. I'm trying to help you. But it's, if, your, if your family don't know you, say you're doing everything your family do. You're doing everything your coworkers do. You're doing everything your neighbor's doing. If they don't know you saved, then God said you're not in relationship with me because you are the soul. Of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. Come on, come on. You are the salt of the earth. In other words, when I added salt on my salad the other day, me and my boo we went out, we went out to eat the other day, and that salad was really not that good. But when I threw a look, it, it wasn't no no, we went out to eat. We went to a restaurant. We went to a, <laughs> her food is always good. It's always but but me and my boo, we tried to slip out before we saw Raina performing at our show. Come on, y'all celebrate her. She did a wonderful job. I see you, Pastor White. I see you. I see you. I see you. But listen, the truth of the matter is this. God is saying, if you're not salty, in other words, if you don't change the taste, if you don't change the aroma, if you don't change your job, when they see you coming, they ought to know you're a man of God. When they see you coming out, I know you're a woman of God. Not because you speak in tongue. Not because you got a cross on. Not because you got a big old Bible on you. Not because you're speaking in tongue and blend hand. But because, because I talk different. I go to work on time. I don't steal stuff from work. I treat my wife right. 
I treat my husband right, I treat my family right, and I do it because I'm in relationship with God. Look at somebody say, I gotta be, I must be. And so, so, and so he's saying it this way, demonstration. God gets, Paul says, God gets glory out of our life. I'm out of minutes, I'm out of minutes, I'm done. Paul says God gets glory out of our life when we respond with separation, transformation, and demonstration. Demonstration. In other words, when Satan shows up, you'll be able to see and veto his offer. Look at somebody say, that's demonstration. Because listen, I want you to know My brothers and my sisters, when we leave VFW today, the devil will be busy. The devil gonna send offers. When you get to work tomorrow, God gonna send your offers. Why don't you start talking like this? Why don't you start thinking like this? The devil is gonna come and get you. If you don't think the devil is coming to get you, I submit to you, you're blind. You're blind to Satan's tactics, but devil is coming to get you. But he said when you are place of your response should be demonstration, which means you'll be able to say, no, I see you, devil. No, I ain't tearing up my life. No, I'm not going to tear up everything that you bless me with. My car, my house, my family. My health, my stability, my mind. I ain't tearing that up because you offered it to me. And so you got to know, this is when the devil shows up. And if you're a member of HDC, you didn't heard me say this before. But the devil shows up when you're hungry, when you're angry, when you're lonely, when you're tired. I'm going to say it one more time. The devil shows up when you're hungry, when you're angry, when you're tired, and when you're lonely. So what you got to do, the next time the devil shows up, you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to. And when you do that, I want you to know that's just called a veto. The next time the devil shows up, you gotta, you got to say, devil, stop right there. Because all I got to do is get home. All I got to do is get happy. All I got to do is get home to Lady Monica. All I got to do is get in the bed and get some sleep. outside as we transform in our minds then our families will see it on the outside all I need you to know as we get ready to get off this sermon there's a benefit there's a benefit in this test that I will have increased perception when the devil is coming you want to know why you can't fight the devil? Because your reception is too low. You wanna know why you can't veto the devil? Because your antenna needs to go up. And so you need to know that is if we're not conformed to this world, the benefit is that we'll be able to have greater understanding, greater perception of what he is. The will of God. How many of y'all need to know? How many of y'all need to know? What is the will of God on this? What is the will of God on that? What is the will of God over there? The benefit 
when I prove, when I demonstrate to God, I can hope to devil. When I see him coming, my perception will go up. My perception will be sharpened. My perception will be better. Come on, say better, 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 better. Give God praise. I gotta give y'all one more thing. Lord, I feel a preach, I feel a preach, I feel a preach. Y'all stay with me, I'm, I'm done in five minutes. I'll see you, i see you First Lady Cooper, i see you, i see you, i see you. But listen, I gotta tell you to take a seat, I gotta tell you to, then we gotta get my shout track ready cause I feel a shout. Cause God is saying, I'm coming to get you son, I'm coming to get you. But listen, in the text, put up, put up, put up, put up Romans 12 and 2. Put up Romans 12 and 2. It said that the benefit is you may prove. Come on, say demonstrate. demonstrate. You may prove. Can I, I want to show you what that means in the group. Doke maso. Prove in the Greek means doke maso. Come on, say doke maso. It sounds Japanese, don't it? Don't? I know, I know. Come on, say doke maso. Which carries, here it is. I want to teach y'all something. Then we're going to shout. We're going to shout and give God glory. It carries the ideal of finding the worth of something by using it. <laughs> Doki Mato carries the idea of I'll find the worst of something. I'm trying not to preach it. I said I was only going to listen as I begin to use it. And so God's will is something that is revealed to believers as they conform themselves and revealing further. His will. Can I go and close it? Happy Valentine's Day. Happy uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Whatever you celebrate on today. But I want you to know that Doki Matsu means is the more I walk with God, the more I walk with His will, the more it will be revealed. Doki Matsu means the more I walk with God. The more it will be revealed. Look at somebody say, you can't. You can't trust God. You can't trust God. You got to walk. 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 And then it will be revealed. Walk. 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 Walk out his will. Walk out his word. Walk out his word. And then it will be revealed. at first I didn't get this at first I didn't get this at first but I thought about it I said God make this relevant to me I said God make this relevant to me when I first met Lady Monica when I first met Lady Monica I learned something I did not know her worth until until I began to walk with her. I didn't know her words on day one. I didn't know her words year one. But I had to keep walking with her. And the worth, the value of who she became revealed itself. Now, 21 years later, I know I got a bad girl. I know I got a good girl. I know I got a woman of God. But it didn't happen on year one. And that's all Paul is saying to the church at Rome. God's will will not be revealed until you get in his word and walk with the Lord. Walk with the Lord. No matter how hard it is. Doke Mato. Walk with the word. Every day. Every way. Walk with the Lord. Yes, Lord. And then I'll know the value of what I got to deal with. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. And so I understand. I understand.
understand that you don't know the value of God's word right now. But Hebrews 11 and 1 says, now faith, which means today, now faith is the substance. That is something that's coming. Look at somebody say, it's coming. It's coming of things hoped for. The evidence of something I don't even understand. I don't know the value of God's word right now. But I will. Look at somebody say, so I will. I sure enough will. Hallelujah. So Paul says, y'all gonna help me close this thing. Paul says, God gets the glory. God gets the glory out of my life when I separate, when I transform, and when I demonstrate. Can I say that one more time? Can I say that one more time? Because that bless me. God gets the glory out of my life when I separate, when I transform, and when I demonstrate. Because the mind can change my actions. The mind can change my actions. So stop conforming to this world. Stop conforming to this world. The world is passing away. The world has a ruler. The world now trying to make sure that I never, I never see the benefit of God's glory. So you got to understand, I don't know why God is throwing out the lifeline. I don't know why he cares. I don't know why he's dead in his life for me. Because I'm always fulfilling my obsession. I'm always dealing with self-indulgence. I'm always seeking more. never say it right, and my mind ain't never right, so why do you love me, I'm filthy, I'm raggedy, I'll never do it right, why are you coming to get me, cause God says, when you're doing what I'm taking you, you don't need to be in relationship with me, where I'm going to you, where you're going, you're gonna need, you're gonna need, you're gonna need me. So you need to walk in the light, his light, his light. Stay in touch with God, stay in touch with his word, stay in touch with what God, God. He says, I love you, son. I know you're raggedy. I love you, son. I know you're not. I know your mind is wrong. But look at somebody say, God. 